And welcome everybody here in Twitch Chats and everybody on YouTube for some Selesnia Nights in Best of One. This list uh, was a list from one of the viewers in chat, Borderland Ranger, who plays uh, Selesnia all the time. And y'all know me, I'm, I'm a sucker for fun Selesnia decks. And they said they've been having fun with this one over in Best of One. So let's give it a try. So we have a Knight sub-theme here with, I guess it's a main theme with Worthy Knight and Acclaimed Contender, giving us the, the boost for uh, playing more Knights. Um, we have, uh, of course, this one, whenever you uh, cast a Knight, you get a 1-1. One, one. Acclaimed Contender does need a Knight on the battlefield, but if you do, then whenever you play it, uh, you can look at the top five cards of your library, reveal a Knight, an Aura, Equipment, or a Legendary Artifact. Um, so it's not only a Knight, which we have, we have the 16 Knights in the deck, all together, including our Centaur Knights and the Dryad Knights with Knight of Autumn and Conclave Cavalier. But then also, it's a Legendary Artifact. So we can get Circle of Loyalty and the Great Henge. These are like our top end cards that make our deck pretty powerful, are these two Legendary Artifacts over here. Um, Circle of Loyalty says the third part about it says whenever you cast a legendary spell, you create a two-two white knight creature token. So we need so we have legendary spells in here also with Tristani's, Tulsimers, and Questing Beast. So we have, um, and of course also the Great Henge. So we have some some a different uh, some different legendary spells to trigger the Circle of Loyalty as well. And of course, Once Upon a Time is just amazing in creature decks, just helping smooth our deck out. You know, it helps us make sure that we have another knight for a claimed contender um, and everything, or can help us find a claimed contender. So, you know, like we can Once Upon a Time grab a claimed contender that can grab Circle of Loyalty or the Great Henge. And then, of course, in the late game, you know, we can grab Questing Beast, Tulsimer, Tristani, all of these things as well. Um, this deck is not great against Oko, but that's, you know. That's okay. We're gonna you're gonna have different things like we talked about. Grixis fires are just gonna struggle against. Um, uh, that's gonna struggle against Simic Flash. This one's gonna struggle more against Oko. Like turning Conclave Cavalier into just a three three is very rough. Same with Questing Beast. Same with these artifacts and everything. But you don't see as much Oko in Best of One, and uh, this deck looks like this could be pretty sweet against. Uh, you know, pretty good against Aggro going bigger than Aggro. And then, um, then a pretty big, uh, or then then has like some really good card advantage that can go over the control decks. There's a lot of fires of invention, witches oven, um, in this format. Like, there's a lot of artifacts and enchantments. We've seen like Doom Foretold. Um, so night playing four main deck Knight of Autumn and like four Once Upon a Times and four Acclaim Contenders that can find them also is really good in this format. So I'm excited about these four main deck Knight of Autumn. But anyway, we're going to play seven games. And let's see how we do with our seven games with Selesnia Knights. Here we go. Hmm. So we're playing against a Dark Mage. Our first match. I don't have any one drop to play, so there's no reason for me to play Once Upon a Time. There's no one drops in our deck. So we're, we're going to be playing this on turn two. We want to play it before we play another spell, but it's good to it's good to take my two draw steps first and know what my two draw steps are going to look like so that we and also get more information about what my opponent's doing before we do this. Okay. Um, if I lead with Paradise Druid, then I'll have four mana, and I, I won't be able to... I could, like, Questing Beast then. I could go, like, Druid into Questing Beast, or I could go Worthy Knight into Acclaimed Contender. Hmm... This is kind of a tough call, honestly. I want to play Paradise Druid. I think getting the extra mana down is is the thing. So I'm going to be playing Paradise Druid. I'm not going to do the Worthy Knight into a Acclaimed Contender. 
So that means the next turn I'm probably going to go like Worthy Knight plus like Once Upon a Time. Alright, I'm going to grab this. I, I don't think I want turn 3 Questing Beast. I don't know, maybe I should. Could have just grabbed the land also, I suppose. I'm glad we didn't just grab the land. Maybe I should have just grabbed Questing Beast. I don't know, that was tough. I guess Questing Beast would have been better to play here than Worthy Knight. Hopefully this Tristani helps us. Ugh. Helps us stabilize. I don't know. That's an awesome start for our opponent. All right, well, taking taking that land it's starting to look really bad right now. Off that second one, I, I basically I didn't want to shock. If I didn't take that untapped land, we would have had to shock. But then we just drew, our two draw stops were Plains Forest since then. So if I would have taken Knight of Autumn, I could have played that, gotten another two two, gained four life. This just looks really bad. Wait, I thought I was blocking with Paradise Druid in. Oh, I thought I was keeping Worthy Knight and I was blocking with Paradise Druid in that. Sorry, I, how I, I stopped blocking the, the Lux and I thought, oh no, that was that was a mistake. I meant to keep the Worthy Knight and trade off the Paradise Druid. It's unfortunate.
I thought okay, and and, I, and then I just did the math wrong there. Man, that was a couple of mess ups. I thought I could I thought I could play both of those and not play the and not tap the Paradise Druid. I thought I could keep the Paradise Druid untapped. All right, so we're at five. And I'm just taking lethal now. Man, so I just messed this up. Okay, well, warm-up game, new deck, warm-up game. That was a that was a bad game by me there. Which happens sometimes. It doesn't happen all the time. I need to tell my records over here, but sometimes I make wrong decisions. I like what our deck was doing though. <laughs> yeah, new deck. Who dis? So yeah, I needed to grab the beast, the questing beast there. Yeah, probably would have made my life easier. All right, we're putting back a Tulsimer. I'm not sure, Kendis. We'll see. I don't know. All right, yeah, we have to hit land drops. So that once upon a time was a, a good draw of just getting a land. And then we put a bunch of spells down to the bottom. So hopefully we have some more lands here coming up. We sure do. Um... I guess it doesn't it doesn't hurt too much to just put to shock in because we're going to be shocking in eventually anyway. Cardboard creationism. Thanks for that sub there. Yeah, I definitely had the tools to win that last game. Definitely should have won that, that game. If I play if I play that game over, pretty confident I'd be winning it, but we are not gonna be playing it over. It's not how magic works. So I'm, I could have pre prioritized the Great Henge by not blocking. I would have been able to play the Great Henge, but instead I prioritized get rid of their creatures. I have a whole bunch of stuff and trying to kill them. Yeah, Cavalier does match up really well against Questing Beast. It is true. I attack with Tulsimer, they block. If I attack with everything, they block Tulsimer, they take eight, go to four. So they have to play, like, if they just play two creatures, they die. They have to play, like, three creatures here. Because two creatures. Means they block Worthy Knight, Paradise Druid, and this 2 2, that's still 4 damage. Witness the ties that bind us all. So just being like the mono green deck. The 
Stand fights for us. Oh, we could go with this aggressive line. Aggressive line paying off. And we're back to 500. One and one. A good team of reclamation list. You can just go to like the, the Mythic Championship decks. Here we go. That wasn't too hard. So here we go. Here's a good team of reclamation list. Wish this was a scry land. And we could scry to make sure that we're hitting our land drop. But yeah, we have a really good curve here. We're going to hopefully hit land drops. Oh, I honestly thought I was on the play. Ooh, that's not good. Yeah, we definitely need a couple more lands here. I thought I was on the draw. I said I was on the play. Alright, Black Fox, give us a land. So they got a tough scry. We understand it's it's autumn right now. We understand. There we go. I had to charge up the sleeves. Sometimes you gotta do that. You gotta charge them up. This definitely looks like, um, definitely looks like Fires of Invention. That's what all these Knight of Autumns can help deal with that card. Mm. This is tough. Really could have used the land and just played Questing Beast. I mean, I... I guess I just get rid of one of these. I guess. Because if I play a claim contender, it doesn't do anything unless there's another knight on the battlefield. They didn't play fires there. Because, you know, they obviously, they obviously would have just played fires and then into Clarion. If they had fires. I am not going to sit this one. So yeah, drawing land would be perfect. This might be a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we got to kill nine things with casual with repeated reverberation into casualties of war with Grixis. That was awesome. <laughs> three creatures, three lands, and three food. Time will tell. What's the deck that I'm having the most fun with? Um, I'd say that I've I've been having the most fun with Orzov Troll Knights, the deck I've been playing kind of recently. Um, played it last time I played it was Saturday. 
I like Crackling Troll. It's a fun card. If you wish to surrender, meditate and prepare. I've played it twice and we did, we've done very well with it both times. Come on, go. Play Fires this turn. No. Oh, wait. Nope. Attack first. Let's not mess up stuff again. I won't forget our time together. I will. Yeah, I think it's probably more likely than not that Oko will be banned. I wouldn't really be super surprised either way, but I guess I would be more surprised if it wasn't banned right now. We found all of our lands. How we were wondering where our lands were earlier. Found all of them. Found them all. Gotta blow up that fires of invention. Gotta say no. Only you can stop fires of invention. Okay. We're two and one. No, not a, not anymore. I just I play just all the formats on Arena, Velshelda. Yeah, I'm just Arena streamer. So yeah, that's that's what I'm usually playing. Just all these formats on Arena. Sure. Okay, so again, wait till turn two before casting Once Upon a Time, so we get our draw step. So we have more information before we make our decision. The deck master is not working right now for some reason. It hasn't been working the last couple of days. Um Maybe that was a bad choice. I was thinking like the Conclave Cavalier is going to be difficult for my opponent to deal with, but I already have two four drops with Questing Beast. Maybe that was a bad choice. I may have just chosen that too quickly. Now I wish I would have taken the other Knight of Autumn. To have a backup in case they have another witch's oven.
I'll try resetting Deckmaster again. Yeah, it's not working. All right, well, we hit our land drop. So Cavalier looking just fine. Hmm. If I would have grabbed Knight of Autumn, though, I would have just played the Questing Beast. And then night would destroy trail of crumbs. Hmm. Ah. I go the beast. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it just hasn't been working over the last weekend or so. A good budget deck for best of one. I like mono blue a whole lot. Um, yeah, SDN go to, you know, if you check out the YouTube channel, go to my playlist. Like, there's a playlist for best of one decks. So you can check out all the, the best of one decks. There's one of them's called, you know, you have to you have to scroll down a little bit, but but one of them is budget, budget mono blue. And it has no rares in it. And it only has four mythics with brazen borrowers. And if you, if you don't have the mythic wild cards, you can just, you can just make unsummons instead. But you know, that it was the deck that I used for that event that, um, where you couldn't play any rares and mythics. And it's something you can just play in normal standard. I'm certain you're quite charmed to meet me. <laughs> Surely you see the humor here. They don't have removal, they only have one block. They have to block the 3-3, three, three, otherwise they die. Ugh. Noxious Grasp was rough. Yeah, yeah. If you want to see any of the decks that we previously played, you just uh, there's the link to all the decks that we pr previously played, and also they're all already up on YouTube um, as well. And there's a link to the deck list in the description on YouTube, also. One bite, and all your cares are gone. before I make you disappear. So I, so I think we got this. They can't block the four from Questing Beast. They play, you know, Cauldron Familiar comes back and puts them to six. They block the three, three, but then Paradise Druid and Questing Beast kill them. If they, have, if they don't have Gilded Goose, hopefully no Gilded Goose. 
Just pass. Yeah, there you go. That's good. Okay. You're welcome, Dreamwalker. Alright, so we beat the Yoko deck. So 3-1, and one, and definitely could have been 4-0. You know, like the first game, this new deck, I I, I played it poorly. I, I made some wrong decisions. But I, we definitely had the cards to pull off that the win in the first one, I, I think. Oh, really, Ravapa? You played against Thor's Off Sacrifice on Ladder? Cool. All right, we're three wins away from Mythic. So we'll see if we can get the rest of these here. Um, I don't think we need a reset. Been up for 30 minutes since our last reset. All right, so three and one, and definitely could have been four zero. But it's looked good so far. Ooh, yeah, I mean, it's once upon a time is is possible to get banned. I I don't think that that card's likely to be banned at all, but it's it's possible. This is this is a BNR announcement that I just really don't have a good sense of what's going to happen. That it kind of feels like there could be a big shakeup. So, speaking of once upon a time, I mean, I think these six cards are good. Thanks, Prisma. GG's. So because of the the three one adventure knight, the rip, rimrock knight, so I'm making that block would be pretty bad because of rimrock knight. And the rimrock knight can't block. I don't have to worry about that. This was the deck that we lost to, though. We lost to Boros knights. Yeah, the announcement is a week from today. It's yeah, it's good for me to trade because they're you know like they are playing stuff like Venerate Luxodon and the Night Lord, like their creatures get a lot, a lot bigger. So it's just it's good for me to trade. Yeah, so, yep, yeah, yeah, people said the Veil of Summer was banned in Pioneer. Cards pretty ridiculous from a from a rate standpoint of what it does. It wouldn't really surprise me if that was banned in standard, honestly, on Monday. Alright, so they're making it seem like Embercleave here. 
what's my best block against Ember Cleave? I mean, I'm definitely throwing in one of each of these against those. This thing can block here, and then this block here. Could have used that land, so I could go Great Henge plus Knight of Autumn. If I go Great Henge this turn, I have a pretty awesome turn of like Questing Beast plus Knight of Autumn next turn. Yeah, I think I should just destroy Embercleave as well. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to Knight of Autumn the Embercleave. If I play Henge, like, they have the... The Boulder Rush, they can give this thing plus two. We can make it six power. Yes, Veil vale Summer is really that strong. So now Questing Beast is a 5-5. Five five. So Bone Crusher Giant doesn't trade with it anymore. Got to break free. Questing Beast was not lethal the, the previous turn. It only dealt four damage. If you mean questing beast plus attacking with everything else, maybe that's what you're referring to, but. Um, can't target that thing. Not when you're at one. All right, we're four and one. All right, we'll go ahead and reset now. I always reset this every 45 minutes or so. Nowadays, keep, try to keep it running smooth. Rimrock cannot block. The card says that it can't block. So yeah, they couldn't just they couldn't block Questing Beast with it because it can't block. Yes, they could have 
Yep. What they yeah, what they needed to do was yeah, Boulder Rush a one one, turn the one one into a three one, and then double block with the um double block with the giant and a three one, and that would kill Questing Beast. Hey, what's up, Owned? GG's. I had a really strong hand there. And I was on the play. So a lot of a lot of best of one you want to try to be on the play. Speaking of being on the play, so we'll use once upon a time for another land drop. And then try to go turn two druid into turn three beast into turn four henge. Uh, yeah, we need two wins for two wins for mythic. If I would have played better the first game. We would be in a better spot. I could have won that first game. Could have been 5 0. I guess that's better to play right now. Because if they kill it, then I, I get two two twos. Tybalt. Uh, Tybalt's annoying. So I'm gonna have to kill Tybalt with Questing Beast. The main question was just play Great Henge right now or Questing Beast first, and I guess if they are playing Tybalt, they're probably not going to have removal for Questing Beast as well. Yeah, I think our opponent's playing Cavalcade. I, I would assume they are with Scorch Bitter and Tybalt. There are red decks that don't play Cavalcade, but this looks like one that is playing it. All right, well, no Tybalt, but all right, so they're just sacrificing that thing to do three damage to me. I wish we could double spell. Um,
We got the ground pretty well gummed up. And really hope that last card's not Ember Cleave. Phew. Okay. Well, that's good for us. That's not a good attack for you. It's really not. Now I get two two twos to attack with. Like it's better for them to block than than attack there. This probably just wasn't a good attack either. I guess I just should have attacked just the Cavalier. Yeah, this just wasn't a good attack. Alright. Back to more bad attacks. But that's okay. I do three. I de dealt three damage to my opponent and traded two creatures for one of theirs. Reasonable. Ooh. No Tristani for me. So I'm trading Fervent Champion for the 3-3 three, three with this attack. If I just attack with the Cavalier, they can double block it. Hey, Unrelenting. Welcome back. All right. Another win for Celesnia. And our 16th sub of the day. And let's update that. We are five and one. All right, we gotta win this one to get Mythic. Here we go, last match with Celesnia Knights. Oh man, I feel I feel even worse for for playing bad that first one. Feel feel even worse for playing playing bad that first one cuz we could have been 6-0 with this deck going for the 7-0. We've been we've been really good at winning die rolls in this in this set. So this is one where we lost the die roll. So we'll see if we can um, come back and get this game, even though we're going to be on the draw. All right, looks like Gruel Adventures. See, if I was playing, you know, you know, if we were on the play, we'd be playing Questing Beast this next turn. We'd be in a whole lot better spot. 
such a difference at best of one of being on the player on the draw. But I've been... I've, a lot of the winning so far has been us being on the play, for sure. Yeah, Grixis Fires did pretty good. I would usually love to block the innkeeper, but... We obviously just need a Paradise Druid with his hand. I feel like my opponent has Bone Crusher Giant. That they're going to be killing my Paradise Druid. Yeah, they were setting that up. Um, but yeah, Grixis Fires was pretty good. Uh, you know, we lost... We, one of our losses was Simic Flash. You're just going to lose to Simic Flash. That's just how it's going to be. And another loss... I got pretty greedy in a spot and made a bad decision. So double edge wall innkeeper... <clears throat> it's gonna be tough. Yeah, you're just gonna lose the flash decks, and that's that's just gonna happen. You just have to accept that, and that's okay. Yeah, double double innkeeper and then drawing a bunch of adventure cards is just really hard to beat. And they had that. I played this the same gruel, you know, like this is the gruel adventure list from the Mythic Championship. I played this yesterday, if you want to see it over on YouTube. And I was not happy with this deck. I lost all of my matches, <laughs> and I never had this kind of stuff. I was never able to do any of this stuff that my opponent did there. I, I also played in best of three, though. But Oh, well. I still don't like that deck now. Never won with it. Now I can't beat it. <laughs> Just causing me all the losses. Yeah, Domri's ambush is awesome. It's get it's put a plus one plus one counter on your on a creature you control, and then it deals damage to a creature or planeswalker equal to <clears throat> your creature's power after that. Um But yeah, there's uh Selesnia Knights. This was a fun one to play in best of one. I liked this deck. I'd definitely play some more of this deck. This one was good. Yeah, that's a, this is a good Selesnya deck. Um, <clears throat> basically, like how we said at the beginning of the league, um, yeah, I don't think it'd be great against Oko, but we we did beat the one Oko deck that we played. Knight of Autumn was amazing. You know, like there's just a bunch of artifacts and enchantments that people were playing. You know, we were blowing up Witches Oven, Ember Cleave. Fires of Invention, Trail of Crumbs. So yeah, really like just having the four Knight of Autumns in this format. Conclave Cavalier was pretty decent there too. Um, but yeah, this is just this is just a good, solid deck. I liked it. Very good. Okay. Um, yeah, Wolf Tech also. Yeah, Wolf Tech. This is this is very similar to the Wolf Tech. They're they're both kind of similar play style and everything and i liked them both i like how we have the worthy knight acclaimed contender you know, like the acclaimed contender finding us our top end cards and stuff this deck has a pretty good late game and it's just pretty decent against aggro decks for the most part um yeah i liked it i like the conclave cavaliers like 
these other like there are like other like these other like gruel decks that you see in best of one a lot more like other questing beast attacking decks like cavalier matches up so well against questing beast and against bone crusher giant and everything you know trading and creating a couple of tutus especially when you start um figuring in cards like circle of loyalty and the great henge as well um but there we go that's the lesnia knights all right, if you're watching on YouTube, you know the drill. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. I would appreciate both of those. And of course, leave comments. Um, that always helps out as well. So please do that too. But thanks so much for watching Selesnia Nights, and I'll see you for the next video.